chapter 9, Jesus' compassionate power. In Matthew 9, we are given a deeper look into the heart of Jesus' love, compassion, and power over sickness, sin, and even death. The chapter highlights several miracles, each reflecting a unique aspect of Jesus' ministry and his authority. 1. Jesus heals the paralyzed man, Matthew 9, 1-8. The chapter begins with Jesus returning to his own town, Capernaum. There some people brought a paralyzed man lying on a mat. Their faith moved Jesus and instead of simply healing the man physically, Jesus first addressed his spiritual need. Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven, Matthew 9-2 to in LT. This shocked the religious leaders who accused Jesus of blasphemy. In response, Jesus asked, Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? Matthew 9 to 5 in LT. To prove his authority to forgive sins, Jesus told the man to get up and walk and he did. This miracle was a reminder that Jesus not only cares about our physical well-being, but also the healing of our souls. 2. Jesus calls Matthew, Matthew 9 to 9 to 13. The calling of Matthew, the tax collector, is both simple and profound. Matthew was seen as an outcast working for the oppressive Roman government and his profession was despised by many. Yet Jesus looked beyond his flaws and said, Follow me and be my disciple, Matthew 9 to 9 in LT. Without hesitation, Matthew got up and followed him. This encounter reminds us that Jesus calls everyone, regardless of their past, into his love and grace. When the Pharisees questioned Jesus' choice to dine with tax collectors and sinners, Jesus made his mission clear. Healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners, Matthew 9, 12, 13, and LT 3. The wine and old Weniskins, Matthew 9, 14, minus 17. After calling Matthew, some of John the Baptist's disciples asked why Jesus' disciples did not fast like they did. Jesus responded with a profound analogy to wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom. Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast, Matthew 9, 15, in LT. He then elaborates with the example of new wine and old wineskins. This teaching is a call to understand that Jesus brought a new way, one that could not be confined. By old traditions, his arrival was a transformative moment in history, bringing about a new covenant of grace. For Jesus heals the bleeding woman and raises a dead girl, Matthew 9, 18 to 26. As Jesus continued his ministry, a synagogue leader came to him, desperate for help because his daughter had just died. On the way to his home, a woman who had been suffering from bleeding for twelve years reached out in faith and touched the hem of Jesus' robe. Instantly, she was healed. Jesus noticed her faith and told her, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well, Matthew 9, 22, in LT. When Jesus arrived at the synagogue leader's house, he was met with ridicule as he told the mourners the girl was not dead but only sleeping. Yet, Jesus took the girl by the hand and she rose up, alive again. These two stories remind us that Jesus responds to desperate faith, whether it's whispered in secret or shouted in public. 5. Jesus heals the blind and the mute, Matthew 9, 27-34. The blind men followed Jesus, crying out, Son of David, have mercy on us. Matthew 9, 27, in LD. Jesus asked if they believed he could heal them, and when they affirmed their faith, Jesus touched their eyes and they were healed. Next, a demon-possessed man who couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. With just a word, Jesus drove out the demon and the man regained his ability to speak. These miracles demonstrate Jesus' power over spiritual darkness and physical limitations. 6. The Harvest is Plentiful, Matthew 9, 35-38 the chapter ends with a profound statement on the need for laborers in God's harvest. As Jesus traveled through cities and villages, he saw crowds of people who were confused and helpless. Like sheep without a shepherd, Matthew 9, 36, and Elsie's heart was filled with compassion for them. Jesus then told his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields, Matthew 9, 37 to 38 in LT. This call remains true for us today. There is a world in need of the love and hope found in Christ, and we are called to be workers in his harvest. Reflection and Application Matthew 9 reveals Jesus' compassion and power in ways that still speak to us today. Through his miracles, we see that 
faith is key, whether it's the faith of the paralyzed man's friends, bleeding woman, or the blind men, Jesus responds to genuine, humble faith. Jesus forgives and heals. He is concerned with both our physical needs and, more importantly, the state of our hearts. The new way of Jesus following Jesus requires a new heart and new life, not just an adherence to old traditions. The need for labor is Jesus calls us to participate in his work. The world is still full of people who need the gospel and he invites us to be his hands and feet. As we read Matthew 9, we should ask ourselves, where is God calling me to step out in faith? How can I participate in his harvest today?